The objective of this demonstration is to analyze how downforce is generated and examine how it can be used in the real world. Open a new session of Discovery. Close the welcome screen and browse for the file f one car rear wingdscl The model we are currently looking at is similar to the rear wing of a Formula One car. If you look closely, you'll notice that the two segments spanning across the model are simply airfoils flipped upside down. The inverted airfoils generate the same type of force as the wings of an airplane, but the force is now pointing down instead of up. This force is called downforce, and it increases the tire's grip on the track, allowing the car to drive faster through high-speed corners. To begin the exercise, click External Flow. Zoom out to get a better view of the enclosure indicated by the wireframe outline. Assign the inlet face by clicking the green arrow on the right side of the enclosure. Click the face at the bottom of the enclosure to define the ground plane. The fluid enclosure is then created around the rear wing. Let's now set up the simulation physics. The default fluid for the simulation is water. Right click the water liquid entry and select edit. Set the fluid used in the simulation to air. Now let's adjust the boundary conditions. The top speed of a Formula One car is over 300 kilometers per hour. So let's set the flow inlet velocity to 85 meters per second. Keep the flow outlet pressure at zero. Edit the ground plane and set it to be a free slip wall to match the extents. Start the simulation by clicking the solve button. The streamlines are shown by default as the simulation starts. Deactivate the streamlines and activate the contours with location set to all faces and surface display priority set to outer. Activate the cut plane to see the results clearly. You may need to rotate the cut plane to properly position it as a cross section. Now let's improve the resolution of the wing geometry. Let's start by slightly reducing the size of the enclosure. This is okay for the scope of this exercise. Let's move the sides of the enclosure a little bit closer to the wing and edit the position of the top and outlet faces. Hold Ctrl and select each of the two side faces first. Activate the pull tool. Click and drag the mouse to adjust the size of the enclosure. Make sure to leave a little bit of room on either side for the airflow. Now, adjust the back and top faces. Once you've finished resizing the enclosure, press the S key to close the pull tool. Go to the model tree at the top left of the window and clear the checkbox next to the enclosure to hide it. Let's increase our fidelity a bit as well. In our case, we achieved a fidelity of approximately 9 millimeters. The simulation results will update. Once the simulation is complete, we can take a look at the results a little more closely. We know the simulation is complete when the hexagon is fully green. Since the end plates of the rear wing obstruct our view from the side, we can right click on this center plane and select Clip with Plane, then select Clip. This will cut the model visually and give us a better view of what's happening at the cut plane. If we go to our side view and zoom in, we can see what's happening in each of these airfoil sections. Notice that a small bit of the airflow is passing through the gap between the two airfoils. As the air accelerates through that gap around the upper airfoil, it improves the downforce effect. We can also see that behind the two wings, there's a lot of turbulence generated. Deactivate the clip plane. Let's activate streamlines and use those to visualize the results as well. Deactivate the contours, then select streamlines. Zoom out and rotate the model so we have a good view of the emitter. Click the emitter outline and drag the mouse to adjust its shape.
we can adjust the width of the streamlines from the menu below. The streamlines help us understand how the fluid moves as it interacts with the rear wing of the car. Now let's take a look at the pressure distribution on the surfaces. Deactivate the streamlines and activate the contours. Set the results to display static pressure. Have the contours location set to all faces and the surface display priority set to inner. Disable the cut plane if necessary and hide the rear wing and DRS from the model tree. We can easily see that the top faces of the wings, especially the bottom wing, experience high pressure. This is indicated by the orange color. On the bottom side, we can see several regions colored in blue or green. These represent the region where the flow accelerates and the pressure drops. This causes a suction effect on the bottom side of the wing that adds to the high pressure on the top and this pressure difference is what generates the downforce to give the car better grip through high-speed turns. This concludes the demonstration on understanding how downforce is generated.